Welcome to These A Yonder Grace, bringing faith, hope, and the love of Christ to everyone. I'm your host, Teresa, otherwise known as Theezy. I hope everyone has had a wonderful week. Mine wasn't too bad, aside from dealing with whatever this throat and congestion thing is that I have. I was around my dad as he's been battling the flu, so I think I may have been dealing with some of the effects from it, but not full on, thankfully. So please accept my apologies in advance for my voice or any coughing you may hear throughout this episode. If this is your first time listening to the Theezy and the Grace podcast, I would love to welcome you. Please take a moment to also listen to the other eight episodes to learn a little more about me and this podcast, and also check out some other episodes on attitude adjustment, perseverance, worthiness, sacrifice, and the most recent one, which is titled For Your Good, all of which I hope you'll enjoy. Theezy Under Grace is available on 11 platforms. I know I say it every episode, but yes, it is available on 11 streaming platforms. It is available on iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes or Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Radio Public, Stitcher, CastBox, Pocket Cast, Breaker, and Overcast. Just download any of these apps or head to their respective websites, search for Theezy Under Grace, and subscribe, follow, and share. Now, guys, Theezy Under Grace is on YouTube. I just launched the YouTube channel for the Theezy Under Grace podcast earlier this week, and currently all episodes are available, and soon to come, I'll be recording videos as another way to interact and share this podcast and blog with you. So just go to YouTube, search for the Theezy Under Grace podcast, and hit the subscribe button. Simple as that. By the way, I'm also still posting posts on Theses Voyage as well. So if you go to my website, which is theseysvoyage.com, click on the blog link, you'll also see that I also post these podcast episodes in blog form as well. Just in case you do want to read, do some leisure reading as well, in addition to listening to the podcast episode itself. So don't forget all about the blog posts that are on theseysvoyage.com. So don't forget to check them out. So this episode is on the subject of temptation, which is something we all face daily and are heavily surrounded by in our daily lives. However, it's up to us if we choose to give in or escape it. So let's talk about it. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. For one, it's free. Secondly, they have all the creation tools you need that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Also, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That comes from the book of Matthew chapter six, verse 13. So you're feeling good about yourself. You're feeling strong in your faith and strong in life. Then here comes that very thing you thought you were over and have grown from, vowing to never do it again. It's been months or even years ago, and here it comes, rowing on in like a lion out of nowhere. It sometimes catches you at the highest points in your life, and it seems it just floods in at some of your lowest points in your life when you're the most vulnerable. Temptation could be just a bump in the road, or it could be that very thing that sets your life on a whole other path. Ultimately, it's up to you on how you handle it. Now, when you hear the word temptation, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Temptation is often synonymous with lust or something sexual in nature. However, temptation isn't limited to just lust, seduction, or sex. According to the Oxford definition, it's having the desire to do something wrong or unwise or a thing or course of action that attracts or tempts someone. Temptation comes in many forms, whether it's visual, physical, mental, or spiritual. How many things or actions do we have to talk ourselves out of on a daily basis because we know it's wrong or could result in some type of consequence? For instance, 
when you want to give someone a piece of your mind because they've wronged you or made you mad. Or when you go buy those shoes you just had to have, knowing that you were just praying and asking God for a financial miracle because your bills are more than your income. Or how about when you're just leaving the doctor's office from having a great test results from your physical or just leaving the gym from having a great workout and you feel you have to reward yourself when you really don't. Or how about just giving into the pressures of your environment, which is often justified by the commonly used phrase, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. For some former addicts of substance abuse, porn, or any addiction, all it takes is just one slip up to send you spiraling and you don't even have to have to be a former addict for that to happen, honestly. This can happen when we fail to strengthen our lives or ourselves daily through prayer and reading of the word. I'll admit, there have been times when I've almost gave in to temptation of many things. And I thought to myself, if I do this, it'll be instant gratification in some form. But what about how I feel afterwards? Who else would be hurt or affected if I do choose to give in to this temptation? Take a minute to think about how many times you faced temptation this week alone and how you've handled it. Did you avoid it or did you succumb to it? Just think about it. If you read the first few chapters of the book of Galatians, you'll read how the Apostle Paul reminded the people of Galatia in chapter 5 that if you say you belong to Christ, then your fleshly passions and desires were crucified on a cross with him. Meaning, if we claim to belong to Christ, then we have killed our selfish feelings and desires. He even goes a step further later in the chapter by saying, by giving the way to not give in to temptation, which is done by walking by the Holy Spirit, because if you do, you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. This is why it is utterly important to strengthen yourselves spiritually by praying and communicating with our Heavenly Father and also studying and reading the guide to our lives, which is the Word of God. It is also important to be careful about what you let seep into your mind and your thoughts, whether it's through movies, TV shows, social media, music, or even the people you surround yourself with. With every temptation, there is a way of escape. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the New Living Translation reads, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Hey, I get it. We're surrounded by all kinds of temptation every day of our lives. Society has made things that are knowingly wrong so what these days the norm. I don't care who you are, what your title is, what you do for a living, how smart you are, how much money you make. None of these things make you exempt from temptation. Everyone faces it. It's our choice and how we choose to handle it. Just think, Eve was tempted by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Jesus was tempted by Satan. Jesus himself was tempted by Satan. Even David was tempted and even went for it with it by committing adultery, and yet he was a man after God's own heart, as well as other figures in the Bible you may read about. So as you can see, there's nothing new under the sun, and as you can also see, no one is exempt from temptation. I know what it's like to consider giving up your salvation to live as the world lives because hey, you'll think it'll be easier, and it's also tempting because it appears that Everyone in the world is living and doing way better than you are, which is ultimately a lie. Trust me, looks can be deceiving. I know what it's like to almost give in to those inbox messages you may get or those DMs, all because you're bored or feeling lonely. But hey, what's the cost of it all? For me, it's tempting as you want to be in someone's company sometimes because when you're married, you have someone lying next to you every night, you have someone to always do things with and etc and etc. And now I personally no longer have that. So trust me, it's been quite an adjustment. But again, with every temptation, there's a way of escape. Now, I'm not referring to every message or email I may get or you may get, but you guys know the ones I'm talking about. So, hey... 
that's why the block and delete buttons exist and also you can have the option to uninstall the app so i love these options again this is just an example of saying hey with every temptation there's a way of escape so basically there's no excuse seriously there's no excuse at all i count up the cost So let's play out this scenario here. Let's say I give in to one of those DMs or those inbox messages, one of those ones that are not godly or are not conducive to what I'm doing or in any shape, fashion or form that's any way productive or good for my life. So let's say I give in, my emotions spiral out of control. I become engulfed in spending time with that someone or doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And now my focus is totally not on what my calling is. I end up distracted, which all results in someone not being helped because I took my focus off of my calling and my purpose. I got sidetracked and stayed there. I no longer answer the emails, the inbox messages or DMs from people that are reaching out for help or guidance. I stopped reading my word. I stopped podcasting. I stopped going to church. I stopped fellowshipping, which also makes me to be held accountable by my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I just stray away from everything altogether stray away from everything that I know is for my greater good. Now just think about this scenario that I just outlined. You see how one thing can lead to the detriment of another in life? Seriously, is it really worth it? No, no it's not, not in the least bit. And no, this is not the scenario I'm currently living or have gone forward with, just in case you were wondering. I'm all good over here. (laughs) Now I'll admit, I found myself flirting with temptation at times, saying in the back of my mind, oh, it's not that bad. I'll be okay. And even that is not okay because all it takes is one little thing and what seemingly would be the most perfect moment for Satan to creep in with one of his schemes to knock me right off of my journey. Also, this also applies to you as well. So trust me, Satan knows your weaknesses and he knows how to tempt you. It comes in the form of a smiling face who has a hidden agenda all along. It sometimes comes in the form of the very thing you've been praying for, all while in the back of your mind you're saying, this is too good to be true, and it often is. It comes in the form of a text from an old friend or relationship. It comes in the form of just a smell of the one thing you say you're not going to eat or drink, or seeing someone around you with it. It comes in the form of a depiction of social media of how everyone else is doing it and commenting on how great it is. It comes in the form of a dame or a damsel in distress. It comes in whatever form Satan knows will tempt you and sometimes you may not even realize it until later or even when it's too late. Again, that's why it's so imperative to stay in prayer. It's imperative to stay surrounded with godly people, to have godly friends or people you can talk to or confide in, and also read your word. It will not only strengthen your faith and trust in God, but it will also strengthen your discernment too. All in all, friends, we face temptation daily. It's totally up to us how we choose to handle it. The opening scripture comes from the Lord's Prayer from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 13. It says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, the New Living Translation reads, And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Overall, basically just stating to keep us from being tempted and to protect us from evil. This is it right here, guys. If you don't know what to pray, this is it. Ask God to keep you from being tempted and to protect you from evil, as it is Satan's job every waking minute to knock you off course and to destroy you. Sometimes it could be something so direct and so blatant, and sometimes it could be very masked and disguised. It comes in all forms. But trust me, Satan would definitely try his best to cause unbelief in you, and that unbelief is what's going to cause you to get off course. He will make it seem like no one and not even God cares because if he did, why are you being tempted in this way? 
I urge you to reflect on chapter 5 and verse 24 in the book of Galatians. I also want you to reflect on chapter 10 and verse 13 in the book of 1 Corinthians. In addition to praying the Lord's Prayer, or even if you want to just focus on that one verse that we went over a little earlier, which is in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, just asking God to keep you from being tempted and to protect you from evil. Reflect before you make a decision to act or not to act upon your temptation, as there are always consequences for our actions. Giving in may temporarily fill a void, but can have a lifetime of consequence. Remember, with every temptation, there is a way of escape. Also remember, God tests, Satan tempts. I often hear people say, God is tempting me. God will never tempt you. God will test you. He will never tempt you. I often hear people say Satan is testing me. Satan doesn't test you. Satan tempts you. So remember, God tests, Satan tempts. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please share and connect with me on social media via Instagram and Twitter, also on Facebook. And also make sure you're following the Instagram page for the podcast, which is Theezy under grace so on instagram follow at Theezy under grace you can connect with me on my other social media accounts by just going to my website which is theezysvoyage.com that's t-h-e-e-z-y-s-v-o-y-a-g-e.com also if you're in the charlotte and surrounding areas and don't have a place to worship or if you just want to join me in worship just for a sunday or two or a saturday um we're non-denominational i get asked all the time are we 78 venice because we have saturday service we're not 78 venice is non-denominational christian um but again if you're in the charlotte and surrounding areas and you don't have a place to worship or if you just want to come along and just worship with me i'd love to invite you to join me in worship at uplift christian ministries for your convenience service is held on saturday and sundays and more information can be found on the uplift christian ministries facebook page Also, another great ministry to visit and worship is New Vision Church. It is spelled N-U-V-I-S-I-O-N. That's New Vision Church. Service is held on Sunday mornings from 8 a.m. to 9.45 a.m., which is led by the people that I call my family, Pastors James and Kim McLean. More information can be found on their Facebook page, which is New Vision Church, or on their website, which is newvision.church. And I hope to actually see you guys there one day. So definitely feel free to reach out to me and just join me for worship. I already had a couple of people that have already done so. And even my neighbor has started to join me in worship all because of, of course, by knowing me and from this podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in. I certainly hope you were blessed by some way in this podcast. Until the next episode, my friends, many blessings and peace to you all. Have a great week.